so I just got out of the gym and now I am waiting on Phoebe. She should be here in just a couple minutes. So the hospital was amazing today, the gym was amazing today, but I know my day is about to get a whole lot better. Okay, so for you guys, uh, please stick around. We're about to have relationship tips and how we made it through medical school together and kind of how that whole process works, how, how to make long distance easy. And that doesn't mean every day is going to be easy, but how to make the most of it, okay? So stick around, and I hope you guys enjoy. Ah! Here she is, here she is, here she is, here she is. Ah! Hi! Hey! I think maybe he's just going to be chilling in the middle of the road. Hey! Okay, wait, let's not get It's four miles from here. Look how beautiful she is. Hi! <laughs> we're about to go eat dinner at the Red Cadillac. It's supposed to be really good. And then, I don't know what we're doing. Plan Look our wedding. Ooh, oh, and plan our wedding. Woo! Woo! And destroy those legs. How you feel, sweetheart? Great. Hey, hey. Hey. Working hard. You guys better stick around. Relationship advice <laughs> coming soon. Nice shorts, Tommy. <laughs> Some pretty girl got me Jimmy. Look what she made us. We actually cooked it together. <laughs> Iron check. Oh. Hey, Tommy, you're gonna put your children in this? Oh yeah, and slide them down the stairs. You mean our children? <laughs> Well, because I really want it to, I want it to be Mickey Mouse one day. So red. So we should do red. Make sure it's the right color red. Well, it could be any red. Red, yellow, black, and white is Mickey. So. Mickey just better not take my place. That's all I'm saying. You haven't even met the Mouse, mouse Man yet. The fork looks like. The fork. Yeah. <laughs> some forks are just too long and look weird. All right, guys, you hear that? A tip for picking out silverware. A tip Forks. from Phoebe. Forks. Make sure they don't look weird. <laughs> and my tip is the spoon has to be the size of a ladle. Well, we're gonna get Because the things. more you can fit in one spoonful, like look at that. It's a decent spoon, but still needs to be bigger. As much as you can fit in that is as much as you can fit in your mouth. So you can eat like a barbarian. Oh, this, this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of spoon you need. Look. Gains. Where? That's Miss Gabby. <laughs> Hi guys. She's the one that was helping us yesterday. All right, Phoebe. <laughs> Found something you're gonna love. Look on the. Hold on. Don't look yet. Okay. Look on the bottom of that shelf. Mickey Mouse Walmart. <laughs> That's so great. Our first Disney product, Tommy. Woohoo! All done. You guys want to see your ring? Let me zoom in. I don't know. The video is not going to do it justice. Something. After all that adulting, we are exhausted, but we are officially registered. <laughs> Thanks, Gabby. Now time to get ready for date night with my girl. Woo! Going to some fancy restaurant. Let's get some great food. What do you think, Phoebe? This is beautiful! I think we found our favorite place. Alright, tell everyone bye. She's all mine now. We'll do the questions about relationships and give you guys a little bit of tips a little bit later. But now it's time for us to eat some amazing food and enjoy each other's presence. Alright everyone, so as promised, Phoebe and I are going to talk about some relationship advice for going through medical school and how to get through medical school without killing each other. <laughs> okay, so first off, I wanted to just tell you guys a little bit about how we met. It'll be the super short version. If you guys want to know more, you can check out one of the previous videos, the proposal video, or any of that. Okay, so Phoebe, go ahead. Tell them how we met. Go to the gym. There's no better place to meet a good man than at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was the short and sweet version. Uh, so, from my side of it, 
when I walked into the gym one morning, it's about five in the morning, I saw this girl sitting on the gym, I saw this girl sitting on the bike, and when I saw her, and I know this sounds crazy, but I knew that was the girl I was supposed to marry. I've been praying for the girl that I was going to marry for a while, and I asked God that if it was supposed to be the girl I'd marry, that he would give me a sign. And as soon as I saw Phoebe, I knew that was her. So I walked up, and I was like, yo, girl, let's go on a date. And she said, yeah, and it was history from there. <laughs> just kidding. I definitely did not say that, never say that. I just walked up, introduced myself, and started talking to her. I didn't know her name, didn't know anything about her. After I left the gym, I still didn't know her name, didn't know anything about her. But I prayed that God would give me a sign um, and talk to me about if she was the girl I should pursue. And he did. And so since then, it's been absolutely incredible. And now we're getting married soon. So, All right, so let's get to these questions. Uh, Phoebe's going to answer the first one. How do you deal with the stress of medical school in a relationship? Okay. Well, the way that I look at it is as physicians, we're going to be stressed for the rest of our lives. You know, work is always going to be stressful, and medical school has its stresses too. But it's how you deal with that stress. So if you're able to talk about your stress, if you're able to find a stress reliever, then you're able to manage it. There's no way to avoid stress. And so if you try to avoid it, you're going to end up taking it out on your significant other. So for instance, I would say, Tommy, I need to go for a run. Please, let's go for a run because we're stressed. Or Tommy, let's go to the gym and work out super hard. Or let's go eat crazy food or something like that. And we would just do the stress reliever together. And then it felt like he was part of the journey in, in the stress and also in the stress reliever. Right. And just to add to that, one thing that helps a ton is being the word as soon as you wake up. If you are in God's word, as soon as you wake up, just start off your day. It really helps kind of negate the stress that you're going to encounter throughout the day. And so I think that's a very important aspect as well. And Phoebe and I, we wouldn't get in the word together in the morning, but that would be our own individual personal time to do that. So that helped so much as well. How do you support and encourage each other despite the stress? So this kind of follows up on what Phoebe was just talking about. And so how do you help and encourage each other would be like Phoebe's stress reliever is running. Okay. And I am not a runner. I do not like to run that much, but Phoebe loves to run. And so how I would deal with it or how I would help her deal with it is I'd run with her so that during those runs, you know, we can talk about anything. Usually try not to talk about what you're stressed about and just relieve that stress. And for me, mine is working out. Working out is a huge stress reliever for me. And Phoebe doesn't necessarily like to go to the gym that much, but she would do that for me. And so we were able to help encourage each other in that and support each other and relieve each other's stress by doing things that the other one loves. And another one I'd say is... Or both. Or both. Same day. Yeah, we do run and work out in the same day. Super stressful days. You get to eat a lot more food that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only work out to eat. Let's be real. Okay. Um, and then also always be pushing each other towards Christ because he is the sole source of stress relievement. Okay, And so make sure to be pushing each other towards Christ. <laughs> the next question would... Do you suggest making friends with other couples? Oh, that's me. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you, <laughs> do you suggest making friends with other couples? Well, I would say yes. So why is because when you have uh, when you have other couples that are friends with you guys, then you can do a couple dates and have other people than just each other to spend time with, to support each other. And you know, having good Christian friends helps a ton and it's very important to have that strong network. And so Phoebe and I did have a lot of uh, third wheels. So Micah, for instance, uh, Micah was one of our very good third wheel friends that we would have with us pretty much all the time. And then when I left the island and we did long distance, he acted as Phoebe's uh, right hand it? man. Right hand man or inter what's the like in the middle like when you have someone that, no when you have someone that leaves for a little bit and you have someone to substitute for them. I didn't replace you. <laughs> he was kind of Phoebe's fake boyfriend for a while I was gone. And why is bodyguard. Or bodyguard. And man, that man helped me so much. So I do think it's extremely important to have other couples as friends. And I just want to add that we do have like other couples that we look up to, like Clay and Liz. They're just like a beautiful Christian couple who's already married, who have gone through medical school. They're in residency now. And we've actually never even met them, but we've been able to talk to them about their struggles and the same struggles that they have with us, that we have and that they have. Um, but 
the primary relationship that you should be focusing on, like Tommy and I have only been dating less than two years. And so we work on our relationship with each other, but the third part of our not that can't be undone is with God. So that's the relationship that you want to focus on first. And of course there's going to be people like friends that come in and out of your life, but with medical school, it is really hard to manage friends and medical school and each other and your relationship with God. So you just have to put what's most important first. How do you balance school and time with each other? And so this is extremely, extremely important because medical school will try to take over your life. It will try to take away everything you love to do, okay? Because it's so hard and it's time consuming and it'll make you think that it is everything. Well, in reality, it's not. When you go to heaven one day and you stand before God, God's not going to ask you, now Tommy, did you pass medical school? You know, and so... But that's how we treat it. We treat it as that it's such an ultimatum that it is everything in this world and it's not. And so how do we find balance in that? Well, how I like to kind of think of it is, you know, even with our relationship with God, we have to have balance in everything. You know, so how do we include God in all aspects of our life or how do we make sure that we're spending time with God is that we include him in everything. You know, like whether it's we're working out, we'll work out and worship God at the same time or at medical school be praying throughout your study and like include God in every aspect of what you're doing so it's never like some obligation oh I need to set X amount of time for God and then the rest of the time I don't have to worry about him you know that's not what God wants God loves us so much that he wants to be included in every aspect of our life whether it's brushing our teeth or whether we're about to you know conquer some huge obstacle God wants to be included in everything and same with our significant other we need to try to include them in as much things as we can and that doesn't mean they have to be sitting on top of us you know you know like wherever we're at but what it means is talking to them and sharing with them and just really including them in all of that and Phoebe and I you know not all couples could do this but we'd study together every day and not study together because we we're in different terms but study next to each other so I may not talk to her for 12 hours but she's sitting on my left and that just really helps you know fuel my fire to do better not give up stay driven, keep going, you know, and so like we always studied together and then we would all, we'd always do our stress reliever things together, such as running or working out, things like that help a ton. And so, sorry, to not get sidetracked, but to really answer the question is how do you balance it is to include them in it, you know, include them, try to include them in as many aspects as you can so that even if you are doing just school, they're still there with you and included in it. So it's not necessarily trying to balance the two, it's conjoining the two and really making them come together and work together. Now, how do you follow your dreams while trying to support the other's dreams? Okay, so all growing up, I always heard this, this uh, quote, and they said, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Great quote, you know, drive, like use your passions to drive you. Um, go into a career that you love doing and then you'll never like dread going to work every single day. Well, I really thought about that quote a lot and you know that's like the ultimate goal obviously to do what you love. But if you change that around and think of it as if you follow God's plan you'll never fail any day in your life then it just that's more relieving to me because if you're following what he has called you to do then there's no passing or failing medical school. If you're meant to be a doctor you're going to be a doctor and so I can support, I can follow my dreams, aka my dreams, as long as they're lining up with God's, and support Tommy's dreams because I know that God has a plan for us to be together. And so by me following what God has planned for me, I'm supporting Tommy in his, in his way of following what God has planned for him. And you just have to, you know, you have to, you can't neglect your favorites, you can't neglect your favorite things to do for the other person. But like Tommy was just talking about, do the things together. If you really care about the person, their loves are going to become your love. I love leg day. Tommy <laughs> says no one ever, but like I love leg day because Tommy uses every single weight in the gym. And like if he's just so fueled and fired and leg day is probably miserable for everyone, but I love it because of how much he loves it. So it's just like learn to love what each other love, but not there's got to be a give and take just because you don't like something and they do. Um, doesn't mean that it can't be fun. Right, so like chocolate. You know, I don't really care for chocolate, but Lies. since Phoebe loves chocolate, I love chocolate. I eat it all the time. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so yeah, basically, you know, medical school is a long journey, and people are like, you're going to be in school until you're 30. Yeah, but I got my best friend doing it with me. So it's, 
Don't look at the end point. Enjoy every moment. Each part of medical school it has its struggles, but so is going to be a doctor. So enjoy it right now as well. Okay, she has the next one as well. Open communication when you're stressed out and be oh, yeah. quick to forgive and to forget. Okay, so we've, we've been talking a lot about how to manage stress in medical school. Well, guess what? We are definitely not perfect at that. We try our hardest to manage our stress well and to not freak out on each other, but it happens. You know, and we don't get into fights, but they'll be, you know, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. Like, stop asking. Stop pushing me off the couch. <laughs> Stuff like that. But, like, it's, it, you have to quickly forgive and forget because you're going to have your stressful days that you take it out on the other person just like they just took it out on you. And so you have to realize the bigger picture. You have to recognize that you're stressed and talk about it. Like, hey, I'm really stressed about this exam coming up. If I didn't talk to Tommy about that, then he would wonder, why is she being so short with me? Why doesn't she want to go for runs? Why doesn't she want to do the things that she enjoys? Why isn't she showing me affection? To prevent all of those questions being asked, just talk about it as soon as it comes up. And if they're, you know, most times you think you know the person so well that they're inside your head and you're inside their head, but the heart can be funny and you can have these feelings that they can't even read because you're trying so hard to mask them from the person you really care about. So it just makes it easier for yourself and for the other person if you're open about it. Right, and just to add on that really quick is to always be humble and get rid of your pride. And so, for instance, um, like we said, we're by, we're by no means perfect in any area of our relationship or in our life. But, so for instance, this weekend or this week, Phoebe came to visit me and I have been kind of snappy at her and that's not my nature, that's not my personality and you know, why, I'm not sure. And so, yesterday, I, just out of the blue, went up to her and apologized and told her that I was sorry for being snappy and I don't know why I was and that that's not the way I should be um, responding to things that may irritate me or aggravate, aggravate me a little bit, that we should just be open and talk about it. And so with that, um, I'm just saying, like, always be humble and be quick to know your faults and be okay with apologizing to them. I felt Wedding bad about planning it. is hard and a headache. <laughs> don't make it be. Yeah. We're having fun. We are having fun. That's yeah. been great. So with balancing school and our relationship together, another very important thing that I think Phoebe and I do is we have a date night. And so every single Friday, we have a pizza night. You know, and yes, we did this in medical school, so you could take the time out, okay? So in medical school, we'd take every Friday, say 6 or 7 o'clock, whatever time it was, get all of our studying done before that. But then at that time, say it was 6 o'clock, no more school. Just a date with each other, not thinking about anything else, just consumed in each other's presence and enjoying each other's company. And then, you know, we'd get pizza, we'd get ice cream, and we wouldn't talk about school at all. School should not be talked about. This is time for the two of you to really enjoy each other's presence and kind of get refreshed from such a hard week. Okay, and so that's something that we did that I think really help, helps us a ton is every week, regardless if it's on Skype or on a phone call, if we don't have Skype or something where we have uh, to do communication in a different way, we make sure, regardless of the circumstance, we have our pizza day every single Friday, okay? So that's something I'd highly recommend. And put your phones away. Like date night is yes. a time just for the two of you. I mean, we Google things sometimes on <laughs> date night. Yeah. Probably geography stuff because we're not very good at geography. Terrible. Uh, terrible at geography. <laughs> what did we look up last night? Sales tax in different states. Yeah, we did look yeah. up sales <laughs> Tommy learned that there's no sales tax in New Hampshire, so that's good. And Missouri has 8.23 or 8 point something. But Ridiculous. New Jersey is 3%, so we're going to be buying a lot of our big things too. <laughs> but yeah, so put your phones away. Don't involve anyone else in your conversations. Um, and just really be with each other in each other's presence. And it'll fuel you for the next day. Um, even though you may have lost those three or four hours on Friday night, it's not a loss. It's a gain in the long run because you need that mental rejuvenation. You need that time for each other. And the stress and the studying is not going to go away. So you need to take the time now to enjoy life and enjoy the journey of medical school. So my final tip is to just have fun. Um, the, the best way to enjoy medical school and enjoy your relationship is to laugh, to always make each other smile, even if it's buying someone coffee and leaving it on their desk or drawing a little picture. Like You have to lighten up the situation and smile. Smile goes a long way. Medical school, everyone's going to look like this. Just smile at them. You may brighten their day. And um, especially for one another, like I know exactly the little things that make Tommy happy. Not monetary things, not 
um, huge things or long poems or things I don't have time for, just little things that make him happy. And um, that's how medical school is fun and the relationship's fun. And just always include God in that because he'll, put, he'll place it on your heart what the other person needs if you just ask him to. Like, God, help me to go the extra mile today to make Tommy happy and make his day easier. And listen. And little things go, you know, so far. You know, and so always don't get bored of loving each other. You know, like wake up every day just so excited to be like, wow, you know, how can I lighten Phoebe's load today? How can I relieve some of her stress? You know, luck luckily for me, chocolate goes a long way with Phoebe. <laughs> and so if I show up with chocolate, whew, I'm good for a little while. No, I'm kidding. But small notes in different places or notes before an exam, you know, just different tiny little things that can really help a relationship go a long way. You don't have to do anything elaborate. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of fun if you do though. Uh, but you don't have to. And so always, you know, keep these little things to help keep the spark going, to help keep the love going strong. Never get bored of loving each other because it's such an incredible journey and so fun when you do it that way. Okay, and so the last thing that I would like to say before I close is that God must come first. He, God must be above medical school. He must be above your relationship. He can never come secondary to anything or anyone. Okay, so my most valuable tip I would say is love God so much more than you love your significant other. Because in doing so, as you love God more, and as you're in the Word more, He will show you more of Himself. And not only will He show Him more of Himself, but He will shape your heart into being more like His. And how beautiful is that, that... As you get to know God more, He shapes you into more of His likeness that helps you to love your significant other more like He does, which is that He went and died on the cross for them. Now, how beautiful is that, that when you intermingle with God, the creator of the universe, He shapes you to love your mate the best way you can, and because that's through Him. Now, that is is the most beautiful thing and the most valuable tip I could ever give anyone is to love God more than you love your mate because in doing so, you can love your mate more than you ever, ever could. Okay, and so please, I beg of you to love God first and in doing so, you will love your mate more. And, you know, it makes me think of in Jeremiah, I think it's chapter 2, where God talks of, uh, is talking, he's talking about the devotion of, the, of their youth. Like, do you, do you guys remember when you first came to love me? Like, what happened to you? Like, you loved me so much, and now you've abandoned me for, you know, worthless aisles and wells that don't hold water. You know, the same way in a relationship, never let it come to that. Never let your mate be thinking, wow, you used to love me so much more. Like, what happened? You know, I, I strongly believe that if we stay in the Word and stay close to God, our significant other won't be thinking that. Because God will be fueling our love for them every single day. And so, to close with, uh, just never get tired of loving God and allowing God to shape you into His likeness. So that you never grow tired of loving your significant other endlessly. And the only way that you could do that is through God. And so as we close, I'd just like to pray for the future couples out there that will be in medical school or that will be anywhere in their journey. So if you guys would, just uh, close with me in prayer. Hmm? Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you so much for everything. God, for your endless love that you choose to shed on us when we do not deserve it. God, for your perfect example of what true love is and how it was displayed throughout the Bible. God, I thank you for your endless, relentless, relentless love for us. Father, I'd just like to lift up every couple that will be at St. George's University and that in doing so, that you'll just comfort them, God, that you will provide them with all the means that they need to help their relationship to grow. Father, and that their relationship with one another will grow only as a result of their personal, individual relationship growing within you. God, I pray for these couples that when they get to St. George's, as soon as they've uh, 
put their feet on the sand, that they'll meet someone that is just so in tune with you, God, that they'll want to join in and find great relationships outside of one another that will help them grow in their faith, that will help them to love each other more. Father, I pray for these couples that during these stressful times that they'll flee to you. God, that during these stressful times, they'll not take it out on one another, but that they will just release it all unto you and that they'll tell you everything that their heart's aching with, that their heart's hurting with, and that, God, you will comfort them and that you will give them their love so that they can love one another effectively. Father, I pray against all the temptations that will come on this island. Father, I pray uh, against all hardships and against all arguments and all ungodly acts between a relationship, Father, that could hinder it so greatly. Father, I pray that you will help them to be quick to uh, forget and quick to uh, forgive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And Father, I just pray that, you know, if these couples are supposed to be together, whether they're dating, engaged, whatever it may be, that nothing will come in between them. First and foremost, that nothing will come in between them and you. That medical school will not replace you. And then second, that nothing will come between them and their significant other. God, I pray for couples that will stand firm in their faith. God, I stand for couples that will not tend to go towards what the world says is okay or that what the world says is right. But I pray for couples that will stand firm in their faith and grow up and be strong leaders for the church, Father. That they will just declare your name and declare your glory, that you're the only reason that their relationship is sustainable. So God, I pray for each and every couple that is watching this. God, I pray for each and every married couple that may watch this, that long distance will not be an obstacle for them, but through the long distance, they'll learn to love each other more and in different ways. Father, I pray for every couple that will be going to SGU and just ask that you help them. And Father, for all the single people, God, I beg that you help them to wait for the one that you have for them. God, I beg that they'll remain in fervent prayer for whoever that is. That the men will be praying for their future wives every single day. And that the men will keep themselves pure, waiting, waiting for the girl that you have for them, Father. And God, same for the women. I just pray that the women will protect their hearts and preserve their uh, their purity as well for whatever man it is that you have for them and that the women will wait and wait and wait for the man that reflects your son because that is the only man that she needs to be with. So Father, I just lift all the people up to you that will be watching this video and that will not be watching this video that is pursuing a significant other. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alright, see you guys. Bye.